Um, in which I read my own life as a metaphor. Right. So I'll take excerpts from my life. Most of them quasi-religious, in a way. And I will try to interpret my life as a metaphor. Mm. So let me take my school days. Right. And I'm dealing with the, the, the priests the priest that I met <laughs> growing up, <laughs> you know. The question of the father figure, father, mm -hmm. fatherhood, my own father, mm -hmm. the headmaster in school. And I saw one thing linking all of these fathers was licks. <laughs> Punishment. Right. You know? Yeah. The father is the fellow who licked you into shape, who, who yeah. dealt with you. That's after, sometimes after your mother deal with you, but she feels she ain't deal with you sufficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wait till your father come home. Final stroke. Yes, yeah. that kind of thing. But you're meeting this figure in school. I get my ass cut in front of the whole school. Because <laughs> of a rumble I had with a girl. With a girl? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She, had, <laughs> she had said some very nasty things about my sister. Oh, and I, chivalric uh, defense. I sl slapped her because you had to do something like that. That was the schoolyard code. Right. Yeah. Nobody could tell you anything about your sister or your mother or anything. Yeah. You had to fight them. Man, woman, beast. <laughs> and she had gone to my mother, who was a deputy. You know, my mother's code was that you're not supposed to hit any girl in your family, your sisters, and so on. A boy who hits a girl is a coward, and you're not supposed to. But my sisters, of course, took to heart, and they could do you any kind of thing. They know that, <laughs> that you couldn't hit them. So now I go and hit a girl in school. So she sent me up to the headmaster. Go and tell Mr. Mack what you did. It's one of those schools. You have the corridor there. You have the classes on each side of the corridor. Little ABC, big ABC, fourth standard, second standard, third standard, fourth standard. You have the headmaster up on a stage with the scholarship class up in the corner, so. Um, fifth standard in the corner there. And you had a series of whips. You had <laughs> Tamarin, you had Black Sage, and you had Wild Cane. <laughs> well, I get a Wild Cane in, in front of the whole school. And I cry like hell. And I decided that I ain't talking to that girl for the rest of my life. I will not talk to her. No, I'm very serious about things like this. <laughs> um, because, you see, there was no forgiveness taught um, in the school, you know. Every Monday in Lent, you, you went across to the chapel, which was next door to the school, and uh, you had to say this prayer. You had to say the prayer every morning in Lent. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, shall obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. You have, to, you have to say it every morning. And when you go across to the chapel and the, 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 the priest, Canon Williams, is preaching and his theme is forgiveness and you have to forgive and the boys especially or you like to fight, or you like to curse. 
<laughs> you have to forgive. So that is steam. Then he goes to the altar to mix up some stuff for a kind of communion, which he alone participating in it. Mm. He drinking the wine. He he he, 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 he drinking the wine. And while he is there, a friend of mine says, Oh Lord, forgive Gordon his all of his sins. He just cuff me up and he just cuss me up in school. And I, I st start to laugh. <laughs> but I kind of, I know you're, you're, you're trained, you cannot laugh in church. God has no use for humor. <laughs> and I, 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 I go back and laugh, but Canon Williams had heard this nigga. Mm. He turned around. I hadn't had time to compose my face. My friend uh, who instigated the thing, he looked solemn as a judge. I get it. And he threw me out. He threw me out. He said, I cast you into outer darkness. <laughs> 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 outer darkness is a, a 10 o'clock sun yeah. <laughs> on hot sand. Outer darkness. And I recognize that this, all this is foolishness. Fathers don't forgive. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> they talk about it, they don't do it. Yeah. So that, that, I, so I that, so that, that was the gist of the piece that you... Um, that that, that is part of it. That's part of it. Yeah. That's part of it. I'm looking at fathers. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at people going dotish. And mm -hmm. the, the priests going dotish, disconnected from the congregation. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately... Uh, the, the, the last piece is my retirement from UWE and my disconnection from UWE. You belong to the whole Caribbean. Yeah. That's how I see myself. Yeah. I feel fairly comfortable in most parts, parts of the Caribbean. Um, so, um, but... But that outside... But, 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 outside. But, 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 you have to deal with this important person, the immigration officer. Mm -hmm. The immigration officer defines their identity. Mm -hmm. The immigration officer... <laughs> the, the first time I came in here on All Fool's Day, um, 1968, I said, uh, what are you going to do in Trinidad? I said, well, um, I've come to take up a post at UWI. Say, so where is your work permit? I never heard of any such, such thing. <laughs> <laughs> work permit? I say, well, I suppose they will organize that <laughs> from UWI. I said, I, I don't know anything about the work permit. He said, you have three days or four days. You have to go down to the immigration department and get some little extension. So the immigration officer plays a very important part in your self-definition. He tells you what is your first name. Your first name is not the name that people call you. Your first name is the first name that appears in your passport. So... And that's for you, Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> so I had to find out who is this who Daniel. Is who is Daniel? Because I know my name is Daniel, uh, my grandfather's name, this one that drank rum and liked women. <laughs> no, I like women, yes. <laughs> I, I never drank too much rum. <laughs> I drink a little bit sometimes. Um, so Daniel, Daniel had to be given an identity. Mm -hmm. So I, I trace him back to the Bible, this dreaming kind of figure. So I, 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 I created a Daniel. Mm -hmm. 
No, the second name is Frederick. Right. No, Eva, no mysterious. And nobody except those in school, in no, high school, Frederick. knew. In high school, they knew all your names. Because you were role, I was Roller DFG. So they would, they would know. So I, I had to invent Frederick. And Frederick is the fella who nobody knows. Not even me. <laughs> he, he is the bitter man. Mm -hmm. He's the fella who just retreats from everything. Um, and he's very, 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 very cynical. Well, Gordon, well, everybody know Gordon. Yeah. Or think they know Gordon. And um, so Gordon is the name that I say by which I'm best unknown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it's not my first name. And I've gotten into a lot of trouble with banks and checks and traveling. So I now put all the names yeah. onto the checkbook. But there's, a, there's a very interesting... Um, so you go, you go as Daniel Frederick Gordon everywhere you go, so they, they count the stakes. No, no, it's on my national identity card, which I got in 2015. Yeah. For the first time, because I, I didn't see any reason for me to get any national identity card. But I realized that national identity card is a good, good thing to have. It suggests that you have a national identity. It's an <laughs> interesting part of this thing where Daniel, Frederick, and Gordon are having a conversation. Uh, well, it's not a conversation. It's, they, it's a conference. They, it's yeah. a conference. It's a summit conference. Right. Well, Manning, I, I felt that Manning could have two stupid summit conferences right. in Trinidad. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Daniel, Frederick, and Gordon decided they, decide they, they, they can have that too. <laughs> and and, and if, if, if they have any differences of opinion, they must work it out at the conference and come out, mm -hmm. and come out with a unified, a unified statement to the public. <laughs>